Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Into 99 podcast, where we've got 99 cards because Commander is number one. I am your Necromancer with all the answers, Necrozac, and today I am just joined by Ryan. Ryan, how are you doing, buddy? I'm good, how are you? I am doing well. Um, noticeably missing from the group is Dan and Lotus. Lotus is off having an adventure to uh, take the one ring back and throw it in Mount Mordor, but... I think Dan told you where he was, Ryan? Yes, he was uh, wrangling Moose to try to ride into Mordor to rescue Lotus when she leaves Mount Doom. Yeesh. Lots of, lots of Moose? Mice? Meese? I don't know what this is. I don't, <laughs> moose. I, I think it's just Moose yeah, and Moose. Yeah, I think it's just Moose. Well, <clears throat> so that means you lovely listeners are in for a treat today because I'm going to be your... Uh, necromancer on the mic and today we're going to be talking about a commander deck that ryan has brewed and he was super excited as soon as this card was spoiled um so i'm pumped to hear what he did with this deck but first and foremost we have to get some house cleaning out of the way i want to go ahead and thank all the listeners out there we really appreciate you guys constantly listening to our podcast and just being around and making this all worthwhile. We really appreciate your patronage as much, you know, everything you guys do for us is awesome. We also want to thank all of our sponsors and by all, I mean, edge gaming <laughs> and X level has been helping us as well. So I can't leave them out. Um, you guys are awesome and we really appreciate all the free stuff you give us so we can look cool or give stuff to people. That's awesome. And um, if you ever want to consume more, into the 99 you can always go to our website that's into the 99.com and that is your one-stop shop for all things into 99 awesome articles by the community uh, more content whether that be our podcast in video form or brewing it live which is lotus lotus a show that is every saturday i believe at noon or two est something like that lotus always remembers i always forget that's how this whole thing works now with that out of the way Ryan, you want to tell us who we're talking about? We're ta talking about Thrasta Tempest's War Roar. Um, I saw this in the Modern Horizons 2 spoiler, and I kind of lost my mind. Um, I think it's hilarious that I can cast a 7-7 with haste on turn 1 and attack people. Uh, it might make me a bad person, but gotta live. Um, so th for those of you who do not know anything about Thrasta, it is a 7-7 for 10... Two green and ten colorless is a legendary creature dinosaur, uh, and then this spell costs three colorless less to cast for each other spell that you cast this turn. It has trample, trample over planeswalkers, and haste, and it has hexproof as long as it entered the battlefield this turn. Yeah, I was really surprised when they spoiled this card because not only do we get this card as a potential commander for mono green decks out of MH2, but we also got the Ooze and what's his name? Avi, I think is how you say it. And they're both like, they're both storm commanders, really, when you think about it, because you can pretty much, well, Avi already says storm, but Thrasta, you basically can just play for free and get into a loop with uh food chain which i don't know if that's what you're doing i hope i'm not sandbagging you but i'm curious to see where you're going with this because i think there's a lot of different routes you could take so i did not include food chain it didn't even cross my mind at first um that's not to say that it won't get into this deck at some point um but we can delve into this deck and kind of take a look at it okay um let's start with the one and only planeswalker in the deck okay cool uh, Vivian Champion of the Wilds, it's two colors and a green, uh, it has four loyalty, and it says you may cast creature spells as though they had flash, and then until your next turn, up for plus one, until the end of your next turn, up to one target creature gains vigilance and reach, and then it has minus two, look at the top three cards of your library, exile one face down, and put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. For as long as it remains exiled, you may look at that card and you may cast it if it's a creature card. I really love the War of Spark Planeswalkers. Them having the um, static ability, well, most of them having the static ability is just phenomenal. They're better enchantments. They're more easy to deal with enchantments. I don't know how you want to look at it, but that's how I always look at it when I'm putting decks together. Yeah, a lot of it, I, I, biggest reason I'm playing it's just for the flash. Um, right. I think you will use the other abilities. I mean, it's good to be able to give Thrasta Vigilance and Reach at times, um, but predominantly just for flash. Well, yeah, honestly, like, how many spells, or well, I should say permanents, in 
these colors, meaning just green, are going to give you flash permanently for three mana. And if Thrasta is your commander, you probably want to flash in Thrasta as soon as possible, as often as possible. And then it's just upsides. Like, it's a very strong card. I think it's silly. It's kind of as cheap as it is. Um, we can move to enchantments next. Do you want to take the first one? Yeah, sure. The first enchantment is a cynicism. It's three and a green green for an enchantment, obviously. Creatures you control can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. Then you pay one and a green or generate target creature. So well, it's just in here to protect Thrasta. I mean, it will do other work, but the predominant role is so that they can't mess with my Thrasta when I get, after I get it into play. Yeah, and regeneration is such a good, like, keyword it's not evergreen anymore which is a bummer but regenerate just it does so much to keep your creatures around and if there's anything attached to them or anything i'm sorry enchanted to them or counters at all you get to keep all that stuff on it which is nice yep uh the next card is boar umbra it's two colors and a green uh it's an enchantment aura enchant creature enchant creature gets plus three plus three and has totem armor uh, Total Armor, if you don't know, it's if Enchanted Creature would be destroyed, instead remove all damage from it and destroy the aura. So is it just beefiness and protection? It's more the protection. I mean, the beefiness is nice to get Thrasta up to a 10-10, um, but just so that you can't... It, get, it keeps Thrasta in play. I mean, you're going to try to jump through some hoops to get Thrasta into play as fast as possible, so it's nice to be able to protect it for a turn or two if you're going to be dealing with removal. So if that's the case, not to... Not to derail the conversation, but did you think about Bear Umbra? I did not. Um, not to say that it can't go in. I don't remember. Maybe it had... I may have looked at it, and maybe it was more expensive, and that's why I didn't put it in. Yeah, that but, could be it. I thought it gotten a, I thought it had gotten a lot cheaper, but, I mean, if you're just looking for the protection aspect, having Bear Umbra would be awesome, because it also, when Thrasta would attack, because it gives a totem armor, but it also untaps all your lands. Yeah, so, it might be definitely something to consider to put in the deck. Okay, so yeah. uh, the next card you got in here is ah, Guardian Project, which is three and a green for an enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature ETBs under your control, if it doesn't, <clears throat> excuse me, doesn't have the same name as another creature you control, um, you get to or a creature in your graveyard, you get to draw a card. This is kind of, I think, a commander staple now because we only play one ofs for most decks. So just being able to drop a creature and draw a card, especially in mono green. Seems pretty good. Yeah. Uh, the next card is Kenrith's Transformation. It's a colorless and a green enchantment aura, enchant creature, and when it ETBs, you draw a card, and then enchant creature loses all abilities and is a green elk with base power and toughness 3-3 three, three until end of... Not until end of turn, sorry. Just base power 3-3. Three, three. Um, it's just pieces of removal. Um, green doesn't really have a ton of removal outside of, like, fight mechanics. Yeah. Um, and it also helps deal with, you know, if you're facing something that's very problematic, uh, like Death Touch. Well, Kindred's Transformation is just, like, a powerhouse, honestly, because that, the ability to just turn someone's creature off, if you're playing in a mono-black deck, you really just have a few ways to deal with enchantments now, which is great, because we used to have none. So, if you, if you Kindred's Transformation, their commander, you're just kind of stuck <laughs> so it's awesome and just the upside of drawing a card like this i think is such an undercosted and underplayed card it's way too powerful especially in a mono green shell absolutely all right so the next card we have is a super powerful card in a mono green shell it's sylvan library it's one in a green for an enchantment at the beginning of your draw step you may draw two additional cards if you do choose two cards in your hand you draw on this turn for each of those cards you pay for your life or put them on the top of your library so I'm assuming this is just doing Sylvan Library stuff and smoothing out your draws and getting you a little bit deeper to get things that you might want. Yeah, there's really no hidden hidden side to this. It's literally just card draw and smoothing out my draws so I can try to storm off and get thrashed in play. That makes sense. Uh, the next two I'll just go over real fast. Um, just Utopia Sprawl. It's a green Enchant Forest, when an ETB is choose a color, whenever Enchanted Forest is tapped for mana, its controller adds uh, one mana of the chosen color to their mana pool. Uh, and then Wild Growth is a colorless enchant land. Whenever the land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional. And this is just kind of a, a mini ramp package to help get Thrasta and play their cheap. It's still on the. It still blows my mind how expensive Utopia Sprawl is. I mean, I know it's I know it's due to modern, but it's still just. Still just crazy yeah, to me. Fifteen US dollars for a 
basically a wild growth effect. Yeah, essentially. Um, next, we'll move over to sorceries. Sure. You want to take the first one? Yeah, I was actually going to ask. I really, really like this card. It's Abundant I do Harvest. Too. It's one green for a uh, sorcery. You choose land or non-land. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card of the chosen kind. Put that card into your hand and put the rest on the bo- uh, bottom of your library in a random order. This is just a callback to, um, what's it, Abundancy? Is that? Abundance. Abundance, yeah. Which is awesome. Abundance is just the enchantment version of this for four as opposed to the sorcery version for one. And this is also seen a lot of play in modern too. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really put helped put um Amulet Titan over the top. Yeah, in in this deck I could see like if you're if you know like there's an artifact that you need to just get that extra, you know, three off of Trastev, you could easily just say non land and hopefully dig for it. So Definitely can see where this card is going to be powerful. Uh, the next card is Blizzard Brawl. It's a green, one green. It says choose target creature you control and target creature you don't control. If you control three or more snow permanents, this creature you control gets plus one out, plus one, plus out, and gains indestructible until end of turn, and those creatures fight each other. I like that card. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's not spectacular or anything, but it's just a good way to, to clear the path if uh, you need to get through with Thrasta. Well, and it being one green to be essentially a removal spell and making Thrasta cost three less well technically two less if you think about it because you're paying the one green so you're yeah. still having to pay that one but whatever i i think it's i think it's really good for what you need um this next card i absolutely love it's finale of devastation it's x green green for a sorcery you search your library and or graveyard for a creature card with cmc x or less or billet I'm um, sorry, X or less and put it into the battlefield if you search your library this way shuffle it if x is 10 or more Creatures you control get plus X, plus X, and gain haste until end of turn. This card is just so powerful. It's a nuke. Like, it, it's going to win you the game most of the time when you catch, cast it. Yeah, I don't see a situation <laughs> where this doesn't... Like, it's... I don't know. I've seen people do this for Crater Hook Behemoth, and it's just like, did you really need to do that? <laughs> That's hilarious when it's like, I'll give all my creatures plus 20, plus 20 trample <laughs> in haste. But I mean, it's a it's a viable option, and I just love the fact that it lets you search your graveyard too. Like that's yeah. awesome. Most most spells like this won't let you do that, so it's it's really really uh, relevant. Yep. The next card is Glimpse of Nature. It's a uh, one green for sorcery. Whenever you play a creature spell you, this turn, you draw a card. Uh, this is kind of to help you when you're getting ready in the later game. You want to storm off with uh, and get Thrasta into play when his casting cost has gotten quite a bit up there. Um, this will really help you kind of draw some extra cards to play some extra spells to get it out early. Makes sense. I think his art's really sweet, too. It's beautiful. Still, I love almost everything from Kamigawa. So I ins- I insist I take this next card. <laughs> That's a terrible dad <laughs> joke. <laughs> it, it, it was. I need to do it, though. So the next card is called Insist. It's one green for a sorcery. The next creature spell you play this turn can't be countered by spells or abilities, and you draw a card. I like that. Yep. I mean, it's going to do exactly what you want it to do. You're going to play it, reduce Thrasta by three, draw a card, play Thrasta, and it's going to be uncounterable. Yeah. Seems pretty good. Uh, the next card is Life's Legacy. It's a colorless and a green for a sorcery. As an additional cast, sorry, as an additional cost to cast Life's Legacy, sacrifice a creature, draw cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power. So basically, you play Thrasta, pay two, sacrifice Thrasta, draw seven cards, play Thrasta again. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the exact line, guys. If you uh, didn't know, that's exactly <laughs> what uh, The final card in your sorcery section is Rishkar's Expertise. It's four green green for a sorcery. You draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control, and then you may cast a card with CMC five or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. Rishkar's is great. Love this card. It's going to, you know, do exactly what you want it to do. Uh, the next set is the instance we'll do. Uh, the first one's Beast Within. It's pretty much a green staple. Mm-hmm. Uh, two colors and a green instant. Destroy target permanent. Its controller creates a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token. Seems good. Just, yep. uh, simple and sweet. Next, we have Force of Vigor. It's two green green for an instant. If it's not your turn, you may exile a green card from your hand rather than pay the spell's mana cost and destroy up to two target artifacts and or enchantments. It has force in its name. It's probably powerful. <laughs> and yeah. in this situation, it's very powerful considering you have, like if you have Vivian out, you can 
play this on someone else's turn for free, right? Destroy two things that are problematic, and suddenly Thrasa is now three less to cast, and you've spent no mana to do it outside of exiling a green card, but it, I'm sure there are some green cards you don't care to exile. And I'm, yeah. I'm sure there are other ways you can continue to cast Thrasa on someone else's turn. Uh, speaking of helping that, the next one's Heroic Intervention. It's call us in a green for an instant. Permits you control, gain hexproof, and indestructible till no turn. Just, just good, clean fun. Yeah, just another green staple. Um, card after that's Hunter's Insight. It's two and a green for an instant. You choose target creature you control. Whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player or a planeswalker, this turn draw that many cards. Also very sweet. Um, the next one is Kalani Ambush. It's two colors and a green for an instant. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control, and then it flips into a land that comes. I think it just comes in a play tap. Don't think you can pay. Yep, that. and it taps yep. for a green, and it has a cool. Yep. It has that cool lion. Set. It's a really cool artwork. Yeah, I flipped it for the audience. If you're if you're watching, you'll be able to see it. Speaking of really cool artwork, we have Crows and Grip. Um, and it's the Mystical Archive version. So it's two and a green for an instant with split second. It's what? Destroy target artifact or enchantment? Yep. Cool. It's another just absolute staple of manner. Um, the next card is Momentous Fall. It's two colors, green, green for an instant. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. You draw cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power. Then you gain life equal to its toughness. It's a sweet card. I really... Really wish it was black instead of green, but I get it. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, following on our instance, we have Nature's Claim. It's one green uh, for an instant. You destroy target artifact or enchantment. Its controller gains four life. People always look at me weird when I play this in Commander, and I never understood why, because I want to be able to do multiple things my turn, and honestly, giving someone four life isn't that big. In big Commander, deal. it's irrelevant. Well, and two, sometimes, you know, if someone doesn't know who to attack, they'll just be like, oh, well, you have the most life, so I'm going to attack you. <laughs> So you might be giving yeah. <clears throat> you might be giving someone four life, but maybe they're losing two off of an attack, anyways. I think the other cool thing that and it's not super relevant, but there are times that you can cast this and destroy your own thing mm -hmm. to save your life. Yep. Or you know, if you need to, you can destroy the um, what was it, Kindred's transformation that's suddenly on your Thrasta. This is true. Uh, uh, this next card. I really, I completely had forgotten about this card until I was digging around for things for this deck. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not of this world. It costs seven colorless. It's a tribal instant Eldrazi. Can counter target spell or ability that targets a permanent you control, and it costs seven less to cast if it targets a spell or ability that targets a creature you control with power seven or greater. Yeah, that's awesome in this deck. Like, I, I don't... Very rarely I would ever put this in a deck, but the fact that I want... The only thing I really, really want to protect is Thrasta, and then this is going to be free to protect. Well, so does um does Thrasta just keep checking how many spells you play a turn? I think so. So if you got into a situation where, like, you know, let's say someone goes to, I don't know, Doomblade Thrasta, for example, you could not have this world if Thrasta's only in the battlefield and it costs three less to cast... Would that just continue to, you know what I mean? So, if, like, if you've cast Thrasta that turn and it's already, you know, cheaper, would that take away its commander cost? Like, could you Life's Legacy it that same turn and just get into these weird loops? To be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure. I would think so, because it, there's nowhere on the card does it say it costs three less to cast it this time. I think it just says three less to cast it this turn. That's really dumb. Yeah, I'm pretty so sure you can do it would have to be that way, right? Because it works with Food Chain. Yeah, so you could just storm yourself off, cast a bunch of stuff, end up protecting it, sacrificing it, cast a couple other cards, and play it again. Tight. I like that. Uh, next, we have Noxious Revival. It's one green or two life because it's Phyrexian mana. It's an instant, and you can put target card from a graveyard on top of its owner's library. Super good. Yeah. Uh, the next card is Once Upon a Time. It's a colorless and green instant. If this spell is the first spell that you've cast this game, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. That's kind of the important part for this deck. Mm -hmm. um, and then look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or land from among them and put it into your hand and then put the rest in the bottom in a random order. Yeah. So this is this is one of the cards that, I mean, there's a bunch of them, but is one of the key cards to trying to turn one Thrasta. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like the people who, you know, try to, 
get a ley line in their opening hand or gemstone caverns in their opening hand like it's just if it happens it's awesome if it doesn't happen whatever it's still a good spell at face value yep next we have return of the wild speaker it's four and a green for an instant you choose one you draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control or non-human creatures you control get plus three plus three till end of turn both seem pretty relevant in this deck i assume you're always going to want to draw cards but the ability to just pump your team also seems yeah i mean when we get into the creatures you will see there are some silly stuff that can help with um wanting to pump your team alpha strike well it's green so i'm just assuming you're always going to want to alpha strike people (laughs) so the next card is savage summoning it's a one green and it can't be countered the next creature card you cast this turn can be cast as though it had flash this spell that spell can't be countered and the creature enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it this card's pretty sweet Yes, very, it's very, very good, especially if you're trying to do the, the shenanigans with Rasta where you want to cast it on somebody else's turn. This is going to help it get a bunch cheaper for you. Right. The final card in your instant section is Snakeskin Veil. And it's one green, obviously an instant. You put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. It gains Hexproof until end of turn. Pretty sweet. Yeah, it just it's more protection. Yeah, I feel that. Uh, let's go to the artifacts next. Um, this is where some sh- shenanigans happen. Um, and I've been called out when I posted this deck online that this was a bit C-E-D-H-E because of some of the cards in this category. Yeah. Um, the first card is Arcane Signet, uh, it's commander staple, two colorless artifact, tap for any color of your commander identity. Pretty good. After that, we have Commander's Plate, one for an equipment. Equipped creature gets plus three, plus three, and have protection from each color that's not in your commander's color identity, so this is going to give you protection from everything that isn't green. It equips to your commander for three, or it equips to any other creature for five. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's there. It does exactly what you want it to. It's just another layer of protection yeah. to help uh, It's a super get through. sweet card. All right, this next one, Jeweled Amulet, um, I'm going to read it. I don't know if it has a, an, like a, an arena an warning that's clean. An yeah, I was trying to find it. I looked it up on, Ga- just looked up on Gatherer, and it doesn't even come up in Gatherer. Uh, uh, let me... Let me try this here. Oh, ha, not Jeweled Lotus. All right, I'll, I'll go ahead and read it. So you can pay, okay. it's a zero cost artifact. You can pay one and tap. You put a charge counter on Jeweled Amulet. You know the type of mana spent to pay this activation cost. Activate only if there's no charge counters on Jeweled Amulet. You can tap it and remove a charge counter from Jeweled Amulet, and you add one mana of Jeweled Amulet's last noted type. So basically what you do is you pay one and you tap it, And you can, you're going to use a green mana source, obviously, and you put a charge counter on it. Then whenever you untap it, you can tap it again, you remove the charge counter, and you can add one green to your mana pool. So it's like a a storage counter, basically, but it's just noting what color mana spent to cast it. It's one of those old weird cards. And to be honest with you, that's not why it's in here. It's in here because it's a zero casting cost artifact. Right. Um, The next card is Jeweled Lotus. Uh, it's a colorless artifact. Tap, sack, jeweled lotus, add three mana of any one color. Spend this mana only to cast your commander. This is one of the enablers that lets you get this out turn one with very minimal amount of effort to casting. Like, I think you, like a jeweled lotus mana crypt in the land gets you Thrasta into play. Yeah, it's really silly, honestly, because this card essentially has given you six mana towards your commander. Yeah, which it's, is it's super, absurd. It's super funny. That's where I feel Jeweled Lotus is broken. Yeah. Just, just in that regard. No other regard. <laughs> uh, next card is Life Crafter's Bestiary. It's three for an artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, you scry one. And whenever you cast a creature spell, you may pay one green. If you do, you draw a card. I like Life Crafter's Bestiary. I thought it was going to be like much higher on people's radar than what it is. Yeah, it's just good clean. It's not broken. It's not like majorly overpowered but it's it's just a good card right well i mean even even in this deck you can essentially enable your commander to be super super cheap and we're playing green already so having the extra mana to be able to draw a card is going to be pretty easy to do yep uh this next one is actually a pretty recent addition to the deck uh only because i completely forgot that this card existed when i was building this deck um and didn't even think about it because usually i'm this card's generally only in combo decks um, because of the way that it works, but with Thrasta, it works perfectly. And it's Light Lion's Eye Diamond. 
Uh, it's a colorless, or cost zero. It's an artifact in the Sacrifice Lion's Eye Diamond. Discard your hand. Add three mana of any one color to your mana pool and play this ability as a, as a mana source. It's basically, so, I mean, it's basically just going to do what Jeweled Lotus has done for you, but at the cost of discarding your hand. Yep. But later in the game, I find this card's going to be way more relevant to add six to reduce the cost of six because your hand's going to be lower um, because you're going to try and just dump your hand to get Thrasset into play as quick as possible. Yeah, that makes sense. I like Lion Eyed's Diamond. I just put uh, Diamond Lion in my Carador deck just for that reason. I mean, Carador wants cards in your graveyard anyways, but being able to get the mana off of a creature source also is really cool. Yep. Um, Moving on to the next card, it's Lotus Petal. It's also a zero cost artifact. You can tap it and sack it and add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Yeah. Uh, the next one's Mana Crypt. It's a zero casting cost artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, flip a coin. If you lose the flip, Mana Crypt deals three damage to you and tap to add two colors to your mana pool. I do not own a real Mana Crypt, and it kind of bums me out. I want at least one real one. I don't know what I would I... play it in, honestly, but... Probably. I'd gotten rid, rid of all of mine until I built this deck. I would probably put this in Piru, just because it's a super expensive costing commander for 8 CMC. Yeah, I mean, it helps speed it up and get it into play much faster. Uh, I would say not faster, but just at a more reasonable rate <laughs> at where you want to be playing commander games. Fair enough. Uh, next card is also very strong. It's Mishra's Bobble. It's a zero-cost artifact. You can tap and sack it. You look at the top card of target player's library. Then you draw a card at the beginning of the next play, uh, next uh, turn's upkeep. God, I butchered that. So basically all you're doing is you're going to tap it, sack it, and then you look at the top card of someone's library and you get to draw a card at the beginning of the next uh, upkeep. It's really powerful. Um, it's a zero-cost artifact. going to make Thrasta cheaper, but also the b- ability to see it you know, someone's top card is kind of relevant just to kind of know if someone shields down so you can play Thrasta unopposed and getting to draw a card is it's just everything you really want to be doing in a commander game. Yeah, it's, it's another card, though, that's gotten the prices creeping up there because of modern and commander. Yeah, um, you would think with the double, um, yeah, the double masters printing, it was going to be cheaper. But now that we're getting back into non lockdown for a lot of people, um, we need a lot of people just need four of, so it is creeping up there for sure. Well, the next card's Mox Diamond. That's zero casting cost artifact, and when it enters the battlefield, you have to discard a land from your hand or sack Mox Diamond, and then it taps for any one color of your... Have one mana of any color to your mana pool, and you can only play, play that as a mana ability. Uh, just the same thing. It's to try to enable the turn one Thrasta. Well, it's nice, too, because you don't have to... You don't have to discard a land. You can literally just play it let it go to the grave and you've suddenly cast a you know a card this turn for free and thrasta is three cheaper yeah i mean it's a free uh dark ritual Mm -hmm. yeah for this deck for sure next we have rona's monument which i absolutely love this card it's a three drop legendary artifact green creature spells you cast cost one less to cast and then whenever you cast a creature spell target creature you control gets plus two plus two and gains trample until end of turn it's gonna make Essentially, you're going to get Thrasta for four, or get it cheaper by four, and you could give it plus two, plus two, and trample. Seems. Well, you would have to, I think, whenever you cast a creature spell, I don't think you can't give uh, Thrasta the that's plus two, plus like, two ability. You couldn't off of casting Thrasta, but you can after, you know what I mean? Like, once Thrasta's on the battlefield, then you can play something else, because I know you have to have some zero drop creatures in here. 100%. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the next one's Soul Ring. We all know what it does. Uh, and the next one after that is Urza's Bobble. It's a zero casting cost. Tap, sack it. Choose a card at random from target player's hand and look at that card and then draw a card at the beginning of your next turn. Pretty solid. Final card in your artifact uh, section is Whisper Silk Cloak. It's a three drop equipment. Equipped creature can't be blocked and has shroud. You equip for two. Is- uh, I guess we'll move over to the creatures uh if you want to take this first one because i know that we've dubbed this as the secret commander of the deck right uh so avi uh propagator ooze it's two green 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 for a legendary creature ooze it has storm and avi isn't legendary if it's a token and then avi enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each ooze each other ooze you control so honestly you could probably interchange these two as commanders for the deck yeah 
Yeah, it was kind of the. I mean, I don't know if I would put Ava as the commander, but there are there are many of games where you could probably cast this on turn one with the right draw and make two or three, maybe four tokens off of it. Yeah, I, I'm just like specifically looking at you have a very well. Let's let's pull that up right now. Let's see. Your average CMC is two point six one. So you have a That's very low. yeah. You have a very low uh, CMC and what five it's not you're not getting the same kind of reduction obviously but you could easily could storm cares about how many spells you've cast this turn jeweled lotus in your opening hand is going to make make it you know give you three green mana which is going to cover your mana cost there and then it's not unreasonable to think you'd have another super cheap drop like a mana crypt i could easily see this coming in and already being um Three spells, four spells. I mean, if you get, let's just say you're you're not on the play, so you get your. Well, no, I guess eight commander doesn't yeah. matter. So you have eight cards in your hand. You play Gemstone Caverns on turn, which is in the deck. I forgot to add it into the mana base, but we'll get to that. But you play Gemstone Caverns, your forest. You play a Jeweled Lotus, so you've got five more cards you can cast. And there is a bunch of zero drops in this mm-hmm. deck. I mean, you could theoretically. Um, cast six spells on turn one and play this thing with storm counts well then he'd be storm count seven so you would be able to play that and you would give seven tokens what what i like about it too is like yes this is probably a more um a more higher powered deck but just outside of just you know smacking people with either thrasta or of or however you want to say it like i don't see this being like a gonna set and crush the table type thing i think there'll be a lot of flashy plays but in that same regard (laughs) you become the you know arch enemy so then you have at least three other people that are like all right we're gonna focus all of our attention on you and turn one if you play thrasa that's awesome but there's also the very likelihood that you just get swords to that same turn yeah swords path to exile like you you dump your hand to play thrasa on turn one and then somebody's just like or i mean there's a million ways that you can kill it yeah very true but okay cool uh you want to move on the next card yeah this is one of my favorite magic cards uh apex devastator it's eight colorless green green for 10 10 and it has cascade 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 (laughs) i just picked up a copy of this card and put it in my on that deck i have never cast this card and not giggled (laughs) it's really sweet like being able to cascade four times with 10 mana is really silly granted most of the time you're probably not going to get super broken things but just the the fact that the cascade cmc is so high you're going to get something powerful and it doesn't whiff on anything in the deck like it hits every single card in the deck Mm -hmm. next we have a shia soul of the wild three green green for a legendary creature elemental it's star star its power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control, and the non-token creatures you control are forced in addition to their other types. So this is also going to turn all of your creatures into basically... Um, mana mana dorks. dorks. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just kind of a, a mid to late game ramp spell to help you continuously cast Thrasta. Well, and then it's it could also just get big. Like, if Thrasta has become too too much to cast, and even with all of your cheap spells, you just cannot get it out there for one reason or another. Having this as a oops, having this as a large beater that you can give, you know, put Whisper Silk Cloak on or give it Trample, it's gonna it's gonna hurt people. <laughs> it's gonna be pretty yeah. problematic. Good to use some of like the fight spells because they're probably not going to kill it in response like they're not going to be able to deal the dam the return damage so if there's a big problematic creature on the board you can just fight right right uh the next card is chancellor of the tangle it's four colors green 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 uh creature beast it's a six seven and you may reveal this card from your opening hand if you do at the beginning of your first main phase add a green to your mana pool and it has vigilance and reach so just on its stats alone i think this card is actually really reasonable i mean seven for a six seven isn't terrible but the vigilance and reach is also super nice because green typically has issues dealing with flyers unless you have reach so that's awesome but just all the chancellors having that innate ability that if you're lucky and your opening hand has it you get something special out of it it's super cool i've been like starting to really really go back to loving the chancellors yeah next, you want the next one yeah sure 
Next card is Destiny Spinner. It's one and a green for an enchantment creature. Human, it's a 2 3. And creatures and enchantment spells you control can't be countered. Then you can pay 3 and a green. Target land you control becomes an XX elemental creature with trample and haste until end of turn, where X the number of enchantments you control, it's still a land. So this is just the innate ability of giving yeah, you. Yeah, uncounterable. Mm -hmm. And there's some enchantments you want to play without there being an issue. Well, not being an issue, uh, but not, you know, not worried that they're going to get countered. The next one is just Elvish Mystic. It's a mana dork. Um, I'll go to the next one is uh, Elvish Spirit Guide, which if it's in your hand, you may remove it from the game to add a green to your mana pool, and you can play this ability as a an instant. Cost two colorless and a green for a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, this is really, it's just in here to enable the, the turn one Thrasta shenanigans. Yeah. Uh, the next one's Finhorn Elves, just another mana dork. And then do you want to take the next one? Yeah, I was actually going to suggest this card over Destiny Spinner, but here it is. <laughs> it's Gaius Herald. <laughs> it's one to green for an elf, and it says creature spells can't be countered. It's a 1-1. One, one. Granted, Destiny Spinner is going to give you the additional stuff, but honestly, like, Gaius Herald is just just easy to slot on stuff like this. This artwork also mm -hmm. has, it's very, very weird. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on. I'm not, I'm not really sure what to make of it. Moving on. Uh, Galta, Primal Hunger. It's 10 colorless green green for 12-12, and it costs X less to cast, where X is the total power of creatures you control, and it has trample. Every time I see this card in a deck, all I ever see it is being too green. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't want to say I don't know how it would not be too green, but yeah, it's generally, it's very, very cheap to cast. Yeah, I... I've seen so many different decks people have played this in as their commander, and I'm always just like, how how do you get this out on turn four every single time? Or turn three. Have you seen it on turn two? It's nuts. Very. Next, we're moving into Goreclaw, Terra of uh, Kyle Sisma. It's three and a green for a legendary creature bear. It's a four, three. Creature spells you cast with power four or greater cost two less to cast. And whenever Goreclaw attacks, each creature you control with power four or greater gets plus one, plus one and gains trample until end of turn. It's just a solid mana reducer for this deck. And also, if you play it the same turn you're trying to get Thrasta out, like it being four is going to reduce Thrasta by three. And then in, this is going to reduce Thrasta by another two. So just playing this card is going to reduce Thrasta's ca uh, casting cost by five. And you you were talking about the Galta problem. This makes Galta cost eight mana less. Yeah, it's it's very silly. Uh, I can see where this deck just kind of compounds interest very very easily. Uh, the next card's Lionel or Elves. Um, then after that we have Memnite. It's a zero cast cost one one. This is once again just another card to either get Galta out on turn one or help the storm count for Ave. Yeah, that seems like a. It just seems silly. There's so much as I feel like you're just going to be dropping stuff left and right in this deck and getting so much more value than other people. And the, they're, I don't know, they're just having so many creatures you can just pump or get bigger stuff because of it seems really, really silly. Um, next card on the list is Nylea, Keen Eyed. It's three and a green for a legendary creature god. I'm sorry, legendary enchantment creature god. It's five sick with indestructible. And as long as your devotion to green is less than five, Nylea isn't a creature. So in most situations, this is not going to be an issue in this deck. Uh, creature spells you cast cost one less to cast. And then you can pay two to green. You build a top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it in, into your hand. Otherwise, you may put it into your graveyard. Sorry, I struggled for that for some reason. All right, it's, uh, you know, it's just another card in the deck that is trying to help reduce the casting cost of the big shenanigans. Yeah, I could, um, I could definitely see that. Like once again, this does the same thing, kind of like Goreclaw is doing for you. You're gonna pay play this, reduce Thrasta's cost by three, and then an additional four, or additional one for four. Yeah, I mean, it basically, it's net zero when it's talking about casting Thrasta. Oh. Um, the next card is Oak Street Innkeeper. It's two colorless and a green for a one two, and as long as it's not your turn, tap creatures you control have hexproof. So this is basically just letting you base, you know, swing through without worrying about your creatures getting blown up. Yep. Like it? Uh, Why don't you take the next three? Yeah, I was going to say I'm taking a couple <laughs> here. We have Ornithopter. It's a zero-cost creature. It's a zero-two for with flying. Phyrexian Walker. It's a zero-cost creature. Zero-three. No innate abilities. And then we have Prowling Serpapod. It's one in a green-green for a cat snake for three. It can't be countered, and creature spells you control can't be countered. Once again, just making sure when you play something, it sticks. 
You can take the last two if you want. Yeah, I was going to. Uh, we have <laughs> Shield Sphere. It's a zero cost artifact creature, zero six, and it counts as a wall for whatever relevancy that is. And whenever it's assigned as a blocker, put an egg one, egg o, sorry, egg o, egg one counter on it. And finally, we have Yava Nature's Herald. It's two and a green green for a legendary creature, Elf Shaman four four. It has flash, and then green creature spells you uh, you control, you can cast have flash. Um. Go ahead. I was going to say, I really like Yava. I play it in a lot of decks that are multiple colors, just for the simple fact, like, a lot of the cards that give creature spells uh, or give spells flash or creature spells flash are expensive outside of Yava and Vivian. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to quickly, there's a couple lands that I want to touch on. Um, most of them are just your generic green stuff, uh, but we have Castle Garenberg. Which it enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a forest. Uh, taps for a green, and then you can pay two colors, green, green, to add six mana to spend it only to cast creatures or activate abilities of creatures. I really didn't um, think. I want to talk about this card for a second. I sure. really didn't think this card was all that good. And then I've played against a couple of decks that have used it against me, and there are so many like stupid untapping shenanigans you can do and ways to just basically net mana to store just for creature spells and let's be honest like we're playing commander so creatures are really relevant in our format and it just blows my mind how much like value this card it generates um the next one that is it's neither here nor there i just put it in because it does something is okina temple to the grandfathers um it adds a green or you can pay a green and tap target legendary creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn um it's not spectacular but it could lead to killing somebody with commander damage um and then i have yavamaya hollow which uh taps for a colorless or ta pay a green and tap it to regenerate target creature i love this card i recently i picked up one from my lgs granted it was pretty damaged but i still got it for half of what it's being sold uh said it's that's pretty good here. yeah uh, it's just a phenomenal card. Once again, like regeneration is very powerful. There's a reason why it's no longer being printed on cards. Uh, that... I'm working with um, Jim Irexia to make a, a a proxy of this card and using land before time art. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on in this art. It's very weird, which is also why I really like it, I think. But yeah, it's super, super awesome. And then missing from the list that we're looking at today that I just have not added is a Gemstones Caverns. Do you um, do you have that pulled up or you want me to pull it up? Uh, you can pull it up and read it if you like. Okay, well, I'll do that. Using Architect because it's my favorite place to... Oops, I'm just messing this up. Is Gemstone one word? Yes. Okay, cool. Gemstone Caverns. It's a legendary land. If Gemstone Caverns is in your opening hand you and you're not... The starting player, you may begin the game with Gemstone Coward on the battlefield with a luck counter on it. If you do, exile a card from your hand. You can tap it, add one colorless. If Gemstone Cavern has a luck counter on it, instead add one mana of any uh, color. So it's a really weird land, but it's super awesome because once again, if you're lucky, it is already on the battlefield and it has a luck counter on it. And instead of tapping for that colorless, it's going to tap for uh, and it, you know one mana of any color. So it's just another way to enable Thrasto sooner. So if that's in your opening hand, you're not the starting player, boom, right off the bat, you have one green to work with before you've even played your land. Yep. Um, so, I mean, overall, I, I think that some of the issues you're going to have, I think people may, may target you like you're playing a CDH deck. Oh, I would 100%. I definitely... with, as soon as I see you playing Thrust, I'm going to try to shut that down super quick. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of have to. Yeah. Because um, the card, being a tag, like, I don't want to say that removal is not a thing, but I don't. People don't play enough removal, um, and I think that you're going to get into games where if you you can play a, a set your seven seven commander on turn one or turn two, you're going to probably if you're not splitting your attacks up, I bet you're going to kill somebody. You'll be able to kill at least one person before people are able to deal with Rasta. Yeah, I could see this being a a game where you would sit down at the table, and if you got to turn one or turn two thrasta and i don't have any removal in my hand i'm basically just gonna be like hey let's go ahead and play another game <laughs> you know yeah um or cool you've won this game the other three players are going to continue to play yeah and i also can like i did not try to completely shoot for the moon with this deck like you could definitely add like the food chain combo into this mm -hmm. deck 
Well, um, even with how you have it now, I think it's a very high powered deck unintentionally. Like I, I know you're just trying to get Thrasta out as quickly as possible. And I think if Thrasta didn't have Trample and Haste, it would be not as big of a deal, right? But the fact yeah. that that's the case makes it super hard. So I would honestly argue, like, if you're playing a more high power game, I would have Thrasta as your commander. But if you're playing a more, I wouldn't say casual, because I still think it's a very powerful deck. But if you're playing a a higher casual game, not not CDH, but not completely higher powered, I would even say you could just run um, Ave as your commander, and it would kind of work a little bit. Um, a way to kind of slow the deck down granted you're yeah. still going to get a lot of potentially get a lot of value but you're not going to be commander killing people out of the game nearly as quickly or as efficiently i would say i don't disagree with any of those yeah so pros this deck is really powerful um it can be very fast it's a unique way to build a green deck in my opinion because you're not going to see many green decks built this way but I would say the cons would be a definitely a price tag if you're not proxying these cards, which I support you I proxying. Am, I am proxying them. I can't afford like I already have a proxy LED and Mox Diamond. Like I can't afford right. these cards. But just you know, it's still a con. Like if you don't have access to proxies or your playgroup doesn't allow for proxies, this is an expensive deck. Um, it's very it's it's very aggro. So if you're not if you don't like being the center of attention or your play group being like oh we have to deal with this when we see this deck this is going to be kind of that could be kind of a downside for you um i could see yeah, I, I could see this kind of too being maybe kind of like a one trick pony not in the sense that like it's not impressive to get thrust out as many times as possible but that's going to be your game plan you're going to be trying to play as many things as possible to get thrust out every single turn or every single time thrust has been dealt with yeah and, and there are going to be draws where you're going to have like a nuts draw where you can turn one or turn two thrasta but then you have nothing in your hand and if they deal with thrasta then you're just kind of like i'll play a zero three go right so i mean there are going to be draws that are going to be tough to recover if they can deal with thrasta quickly yeah and i think that's kind of the the thing about being in mono green right mono like green is a very very powerful color for sure but if you don't have the stuff to back up Thrasta after it's been removed on your turn one and you kept a very good hand, you might just kind of be dead in the water for a while. Because you're right, like playing a like playing a zero a zero three doesn't really feel great after you just wasted your entire hand basically to get Thrasta out. So it's a very yeah. I'd say it's a high risk, high reward type situation. Very much a glass cannon. Yeah. Like it's gonna come out come out the gates hard, and then if people have the tools to deal with it, it's gonna be neutered pretty quickly. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, but Modern Horizons too, I think it was very good to us commander players because there's so many cool things that we're getting to do now or getting to play with that we didn't have access to before. Green having two very like Green always has some powerful options, obviously as commanders, but I would say Thrasta is very very powerful and the same thing for ave like they enable some very unique synergies and unique uh combos in green that i don't think we had as uh, much access to previously um so that's really yeah, I don't cool. disagree with that. and even just some of the comments and uncommons you have in here from on horizons too really do help to make this deck that much more resilient that much more strong yeah a lot of them too will help smooth the draws out and mm -hmm. so you can get these explosive draws for sure. Well, I think that does it for our uh, Land Before Time deck here. Um, <laughs> do you have any closing thoughts you want to share about your deck? Um, I, I, I haven't played it. I'm still trying to get the cards for it. I've kind of taken a 180 degree turn lately and started picking up things for Modern. Um, so I've not been buying as many Commander centric cards, but I still want to finish it. Um, I think it'll be a fun deck. I think it's going to take the right play group to enjoy it. Um, and I do, I do think that it's pretty easy, too, if you enjoy playing more of the high, higher powered CDH level stuff to really kind of push it over the edge and put a food chain in. You could also go the route of like put a Lurin in the deck. Um, I, I don't know if there are any, any mono green Lurin shenanigans. I'm I sure can't there imagine are. there aren't. Yeah. But 
Um, but yeah, if, if you are interested in Thrasta and you want to build it, please let us know like what you've done with the deck. Um, I'm always interested in things that I may have missed. Like um, like Boar Umbra being Bear Umbra? Yeah. I, I honestly yeah. think Bear Umbra maybe. I think Bear Umbra is one mana more, but... Yeah, it's two colors, green, green. The upsides just seem more relevant, though. Yeah, I think I'm going to add it in just as another... Just another totem armor to protect Thrasta. Yeah, and we'll, you know, once again, too, if you want to continue to play out stuff, or maybe, you know, you have the mana to draw cards off of uh, Lifecrafter's Bestiary, or even just, like... You need you just emptied your entire hand to play Thrasta, being able to life's legacy Thrasta and have mana to back it up to be able to play Thrasta again, but maybe refill your hand is pretty good. Yep. Well, All right, well you want to take us home? Yeah. So once again, thank you for listening to our uh, podcast. You can find us anywhere. Obviously, you can listen to podcasts. Um, if you haven't already, give us a five star review. Please consider doing that and leave some comments to let people know what you like about us and even you know some constructive feedback because we are people and we want to grow and get better and bring you the content you want to hear and see. Also, um, please consider supporting us in a monetary fashion. We do have a Patreon. Um, we bring you a lot of extra stuff that you don't get from the podcast. So, you know, consider consider supporting us. We also have a Discord as well as, once again, our website that is the one-stop shop for into all things Into the 99. You can find articles and videos and past content and um, gameplay content. Speaking of which, we do stream every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. EST um, with members of our community as well as members of just the commander community in general. So if you'd like to be a part of that or you'd like to watch that, that's how to do it. Um, I've been Necrozak and that was Ryan. Thank you for listening or watching or both. Have a good rest of your day. Have a great day, guys.